Thank you very much. So, hello everybody. Hi. How are you doing? Good, great, excellent. How's the conference going? Excellent. Good, excellent. excellent. It has been a long day, but it's, it certainly has been a very exciting day. Food with information, with knowledge, and uh, quite a lot of interaction. So thank you very much for, for uh, staying to the last part, but definitely not the least one. So I just want to check if the caffeine fix actually help you, just to see if you're awake, right? So let's start with a quiz. It's not an exam. We all need exams, by the way. So I, mean, I know that. But let's uh, bear with me. I'm going to give you a brand or a brand element, and I want you to guess it as quickly as possible. But don't shout out the brand name. This is about being quick. The first one that raises the hands, or hands, or hands, whatever you feel like, and there might be prizes involved. <laughs> are, are you ready? There might be a, we don't know. Right, let's go with the first one. Remember, don't shout it out. Don't have your competition. So, just be quick, first one. With Hanka, up. Guess the brand. Bravo, we have a winner here. Coca-Cola. Coca Can we try? Uh, can, can I throw the prize? Can I throw you the prize? Yeah. Okay. There you go. I'll be. <laughs> the prize, by the way, is some wonderful, delicious drink chocolates that are smoking from Greece just for you. Um, right, let's have a look at the next brand. Hey, we have a winner at the back, the guy with the glasses. Facebook. How did you guess it? Uh, did you want a bit far, though? That's all right. Health and safety. Don't kill anyone. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the exercise we get for the week, so good stuff. Right, uh, how, why did you guess it? Bravo. So a little bit of personal branding. The person or the CEO or the entrepreneur becomes the brand of the company, the face of the company. <laughs> Be quick. The lady with the glasses. Angry Birds, how do you guess it? The, yes, the character, you know, the expression. Right, but what do we know about Angry Birds? It's a game? Yes, it's a game. Um, do you know who created the game? Uh, hands up, uh, Alex, I asked the question in the morning. Uh, students in the audience, there is one remaining, there were three, good for you. Right, three students from Helsinki University in 2003. It was a competition that it was sponsored by Nokia. So for the students in the room, there's a world of opportunities for you. How old is Coca-Cola? Yes? Uh, no. 70? Yeah, a consolation prize. Oh. Ah, consolation. Good try. Um, <laughs> what exercise? Uh, anyone else? It's 100 plus. 100, 102 years, actually. How old is Angry Birds? Launched in 2009. How old is Facebook? 10, 13. Bravo. Who said 10? It's, it's a play of game. Okay. Oh. But remember, it's a short round. You need to be quick. Right. Let's finish with this one, and this might be a difficult one, or an easy one. Let's see how, how much you are into your digital stuff. Oh. <laughs> the lady with the white watch? No, really. Yes. Say it loud, say it proud. Pokemon Go. Absolutely. What do we know about Pokemon Go? Very popular game. This was uh, an internal startup at Google. 2010, they just became an independent company last year and they launched their first uh, game. When did they launch it? I'm not an expert. <laughs> I know. Um, when? Oh, okay. Go for it. It was 2013, wasn't it? 
This year, July, actually, one of the biggest Pokemon Go competition took place in South yeah, in, in July. So, if we compare, for example, the budget of these three guys that developed Angry Birds, uh, they had the idea in 2003, 2005, they got funding from a uh, business angel, and in 2009, they had to launch something. They had budget to launch only one game. When you go for the Pokemon Go, you have, you know, the, the budget muscle of Google behind you, all the resources. What is this telling us about how to build brands? What it is telling us is that digital and social media marketing and digital commerce is rewriting and challenging some of the traditional principles of building brands. Traditionally, you would think about big budgets and a lot of time. Companies have spoken about for 100 years. But now with these amazing platforms, we have the possibility to create brands in a shorter period of time. And certainly, we can also do it with perhaps smaller and more modest budgets. Throughout the conference, we have been hearing about the digital gap. And this is uh, the former managing director of Google in the UK and Ireland. And he was saying, uh, three years ago, he was saying, I have been in Google for seven years. I'm talking with different business leaders. What I always get is, I cannot find enough technically trained people to hire. So if you think about, uh, I am based in Greece. I am uh, a lecturer of the uh, International Faculty of the, uh, I am a lecturer at the, of the University of Sheffield International Faculty based in Greece. So you can understand the crisis and so on. But despite the crisis, if you're looking to jobs into marketing, it's only to the digital. So it's a great opportunity despite the fact that some uh, economies are finding a little bit difficult. So there is the opportunity, there is the skill gap. What can we do to support you? We have developed uh, a book that um, uh, is called Digital and Social Media Marketing, a resource-driven approach. So this is a key resource for you. But the question is, how is this book different? In an economy that is moving from an experience economy to the attention economy, why should you bother to look into this resource? How can this add value to you? It's industry-led. As we all know, uh, digital social media marketing is very dynamic, it's evolving. So it's very important to keep an eye on what industry is actually doing. But that is not enough. It's also research informed. We conducted a pan European research covering more than 300 uh, SMEs across Europe to understand what companies really need. What are the, the, the skills and the knowledge that the new digital marketeers require? One of the key things of this book is uh, a model, the digital business maturity model, that helps organizations to understand. It's a close road map that helps organizations understand at what stage they are in technology adoption. If you're at the basic level, it will help you uh, evolve into a more strategic level. Why is this book also different? It's results driven. We have covered a wide variety of very important topics during the conference. And some of you may be inspired, challenged, full of ideas. But some of you may feel a little bit confused. Where do I start? Where do I place my focus? If you are working uh, on an SME, you may have probably all these ideas, all this uh, enthusiasm. But where do you start? A particularly important I mentioned before, I come from industry, 15 years working in the industry. And working particularly with uh, companies or recent graduates, one of the things that really stuck me is that recent graduates have all the theory and all the knowledge, but usually struggle to take this knowledge into strategy, into delivering results. Some, some of you perhaps can relate to you know, going to university and learning all these things and then thinking, how can I apply it? So it's based on how you can turn this knowledge into a strategy that actually affects the bottom line of companies. It's about being practical and it's about being a strategic. So the approach that we have with this book is to turn this knowledge into skills. 
a skill a skills that will not only make you employable but also if you're a company that will help you grow and certainly uh, enter into new markets so how do you turn all this knowledge into practical skills um, in the book we have 20 different uh, case studies from a different uh, a variety of industries and also a variety of European countries and online we have also 22 in-depth case studies so they will actually allow you to put into perspective how this theory and research can actually help you to turn this into something that can actually add value to you and the companies you work for. So you can think, okay, with social media you can create quite a lot of awareness, but as a marketer, awareness is not enough. You need to affect behavior, be buying or sharing, liking, um, selling, so it's very important that focus on being results driven. Uh, as Alex mentioned me before, uh, it is supported by Yamo and it's the first book in uh, uh, the on, of its kind that is actually supported by a massive open online course. So all the uh, key theories and all the key knowledge that we have in this book embraces really uh, the spirit of social media in terms of using all these uh, great platforms to reach and actually enrich your uh, learning experience. Last but not least, uh, one of the key things of this book that is different is that it is the first book on, its, uh, on this um, topic that actually takes a very good look at ethics. Uh, digital uh, digital sphere is giving a lot of challenges and opportunities, but also is posing ethical challenges that we are not ready to tackle because it's a work in progress. And last but not least, is a platform and an online community. So I'll come back to the online community in a minute, right at the end of the presentation. So, with so many books and so many resources and blogs, why this book? Who are the authors? Why should we listen? Uh, this book is an edited book. Uh, the Usual Suspects, the, the panel of, editor, uh, of editors, Dr. Arlet Say Hainsen. Uh, Tahir Rashid, uh, Dr. Gordon Fletcher, and myself. This book features more doctors than a hospital, <laughs> for sure. But it's not only ours. Online other books that we uh, know, there are over one, two, three people maximum. We have not only the editors, we have over 20 contributors from a wide variety of European countries. So it's a wide variety of perspectives in a true spirit of collaboration and cooperation. Uh, we have, it's not just five European countries, it's actually six. But also, we were very lucky to have an advisory board, which is all key industry leaders. 38 in total, not only European, we also have contributors and, and advisors from Russia and Argentina. So we really have local relevance, but also uh, our applicability that is more global. So, who is this book for? So Alexei asked this question in the morning, and just one recap to see who has escaped. So, show of hands, who is a student? Ah, so you didn't go, you were just sleeping. Okay, a few of you have escaped, good for you. Um, practitioners, in big companies, in SMEs, practitioners in SMEs. So we have more practitioners in the SMEs than large companies. Entrepreneurs, brave, good for you. Great, so this, is, this book is for you, it's relevant for you. So how this book can actually help you? If you're a student, or if you're an entrepreneur, a practitioner, or if you're in an SME, this, this book will help you develop your uh, practical skills and knowledge. And it will help you not only enter into a new market, but actually grow. If you're a student, it can help you enhance your employability. But also, uh, in, um, in a world where uh, employment and jobs are reducing, it also gives you the possibility to explore becoming an entrepreneur. So actually, create not only giving yourself a job, but also creating jobs uh, for others. So last but not least, Hands up, educators or teachers, lecturers. Yes, a few. How this book can actually help you. I know the students and everyone in the book will relate to this. 
Have you ever felt bored in a lecture, in a conference? Not in this one, by the way. <laughs> yes, for, for, for um, educators, for presenters, one of the challenges we have is the shorter in attention span. And we are competing against, you know, the mobile phones, the Facebook, and so on. Very difficult. This book provides a very strong theoretical basis in a way that, in a way that is very practical. We also have a, a very useful set of teaching material, slides and, and extra case studies that will be of great use for educators in a way that is engaging. Right. Uh, I will not cover all, uh, all the content in, in uh, great detail, but you can have a quick look. It includes severity aspects like a strategy like social media, like um, uh, content marketing, and how to develop content that is engaging, that is interesting, that actually will deliver results. Very important issue of measurement. And last but not least, you can see that we have the lucky number. We have 13 chapters. Lucky number, by the way. And the last one is actually what about the future? What is happening? Not only how you can take advantage of, of these opportunities now, but what is happening and what is likely to happen in the future. The question of the million pounds or dollars, whatever you prefer, is um, when is this book available? And I think Alexei gave you the answer in his presentation at the beginning. Who can remember? November, bravo, extra chocolates here, bravo. Now, let's have a look. How can you get hold of it? Yes, 17th of uh, November. You can have a, a quick preview of the book, the content pages, and so on. I'm saying it's an excellent resource for you, but don't take my word for it. Word of mouth. What the reviewers of the book have to say is easy, is strategic, uh, completely nailed the marketing first approach. So, you can pre order if you if you wish. Uh, but if you read the book, it would be great if you can actually write a review and let us know um, what you think about it. So, I would like to finish where I started. Now, you remember this, right? What was the reward? The chocolate. Uh, who was the yes, who was the person to guess the Pokemon Go? The lady at the back with the glasses. Would you like to come to the front, please? Who was? Who was Pokemon Go? Gordon. No, no, I don't know. Who? Would you like to come to the front, please? I will not bite you. <laughs> Much or not? Don't worry. Right. Super winner. <laughs> oh. So, I'll ask the question again. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Right. Uh, so, I'll ask the question again. This has been a very exciting conference. Lots of content, ideas, inspiration, and so on. What are you likely to remember the most? Ah, chocolates. Content that is relevant. That's good content. What else? Winner? Okay, what else have you likely to remember? Something that is funny. Now, why do I want to finish here? What we tend to remember is where we make a connection, when we have an interaction, when there is emotion. So, the book is not, you know, there printed for it. No, it's actually a live uh, platform, if you like. And where we want to encapsulate that is on our digital community. So I would like to leave you, as a, as a good uh, digital marketer, I would like to leave you with two calls to action. Check out the book and join the digital community. Be part of the conversation. And share, like, and comment. So, we are in the sharing economy, so let's share some chocolates. Thank you very much for your time.